welcome to 30 Minutes with LinkSpring, our monthly webinar series. I'm Mark Peacock, Vice President of Marketing, and again, I uh, want to thank you on behalf of all of us for joining us today. Uh, as Daryl pointed out, we will be recording the webinar, and we'll be making the slide decks available. And in keeping with the theme, 30 Minutes with LinkSpring, we will do the presentation, and if we have uh, additional questions at the conclusion, uh, we'll try to get to them. Please use the chat window uh, for those questions. And if we're unable to get to questions, if you email me, mark.petock, P-E-T-O-C-K, at linkspring.com, uh, we will answer you uh, accordingly. Um, Cybersecurity is one of the greatest threats to a company's viability and sustainability. From a business perspective, the negative consequences cyber incidents can cause are very disruptive and potentially catastrophic. The value of taking additional measures to increase the cybersecurity posture within an organization far outweighs the risk of not making the systems and equipment secure. When it comes to building automation and energy management systems, while they were once separate, they are now firmly integrated within a company's network infrastructure and should not be treated any differently when it comes to cybersecurity and threat protection as the IT operations. Just like an IT network, building automation networks should have a strategy, multiple layers of defense and protection, as well as policies and procedures that are continuously addressed. While our industry is beginning to awaken to cybersecurity risk, we still have a long way to go. So today's uh, session, we're going to look at it from a business perspective. So in addition to myself presenting some of the latest business um, issues in and around cyber protection, I'm pleased that I've got Sean Klan, who's Executive Vice President of Intelligent Buildings uh, Limited Liability Corporation, joining me. Sean is also an expert in cybersecurity, so we're definitely glad to have him on board. And again, our whole purpose here today is not to talk so much about the technical side, but more about the business side. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and start. I think, I'm, uh, Daryl, can you advance the slide? I, I'm having issues for, with advancing. I'll just tell you to advance. Next, please. All right. So we've seen a tremendous amount of advancements in our building environment over the past many years. Today's buildings are made functional by the ongoing convergence of the IT side or the operational side and the informational side or the traditional IT side. Next. So I think we have all can agree uh, what we have seen in the news, the press, uh, talking amongst ourselves, talking with end-user customers, that cybersecurity has really emerged as a high priority. Next. So I wanted to share with you a variety of headlines that have been recently in the news, in the press, on various blogs and things like that. And the big thing here with these particular headlines are that it's not the headlines like we see that somebody uh, suffered a breach uh, or a threat with your typical types of point of sale systems and things like that. All of these headlines are related to buildings and building automation and IoT and energy management systems. For example, uh, just you know, going through a couple of them, bricks and mortars won't shield landlords from cyber attacks. Cybersecurity and real estate. 
smart office buildings have more back doors than designers intended. The federal agencies are struggling with endpoint security. Cybersecurity must be a primary consideration in building design. So again, the point here is, is that cybersecurity is an issue within our world. Next. So in order to really understand the cybersecurity from a business perspective, we have to look at it from, well, how in the heck did we get here? And to sum it up, uh, we got here by what make, what's making our buildings smart has also caused an opportunity to have a vulnerability. Next. So again, in keeping with how did we get here, when we came up with the building protocols that we all are used to today, BACnet, LAWN, SMNT, and you can name it, those protocols were never designed or built with cybersecurity in mind. We really, back in the day, the systems had no established standards. Each manufacturer used their own proprietary communication methods. Uh, most of the protocols that uh, we all use uh, have their origins in serial communication and provide little, if any, security. Uh, we started to adopt more IP type of an environment and technology, which then uh, lends itself to several new and more exist, uh, entry points. Um, security on all the embedded devices that we use uh, has been an afterthought up until recently. And uh, whether or not you believe this, hackers truly are realizing that building systems are, in fact, easy targets. And again, you go back to some of those headlines that I shared with you and other headlines that you probably have seen. Next. So what systems are vulnerable? So I, I, I put together a typical architecture, if you will, from the enterprise to meters to fire alarm systems to a BMS, lighting control, uh, access control, et cetera. And the point here is with these X's on here is that every one of these systems are open to vulnerabilities and cyber issues. Next. So if we look at some of the ramifications, and again, both there's physical ramifications, and again, where we're concentrating today is on the business side of it, so the business ramifications. So just quickly on the physical side is unhabitable facilities, uh, equipment damage, compromised building access and intrusion. But if you look at it, again, from the business side is interruption of business and operations, negative publicity, loss of customer confidence. And again, I think we have all have seen that in some of the cyber incidents that uh, continue to rage on, if you will. And one in, in particular I'll cite is Target. And even though that, that happened four ye uh, sorry, three years ago, uh, the publicity, the negative publicity that that whole incident is receiving and Target is receiving continues on today. Uh, there's brand damage, there's financial uh, op, uh, issues as well, uh, litigation, which I'm going to touch on a little bit here, and hopefully uh, we haven't really seen yet uh, occupant harm or loss of life as of yet, or at least what we know publicly. Next. So compliance. So What's happening on cybersecurity within the business side is compliance. The data privacy laws, the regulations, and the best practices are growing stricter and stricter, and in some cases more complex, depending on the type of industry that you're in or the types of industry that uh, many of our integrators serve, whether it be healthcare institutions, financial institutions, government institutions, et cetera. Next. So what are some of the liability and legal issues that you should be aware of? Um, as one attorney put it, 
and I love this statement, cybersecurity is the new era area of litigation. There's so much litigation beginning now in and around cybersecurity that um, you're starting to get uh, law firms who specialize in it, and uh, corporations are now uh, adding legal counsel to their um, corporate law practice, if you will, uh, to address this. The number of class action suits uh, resulting from cyber incidents are increasing, and someone recently I saw last week said it's increasing by fivefold. Um, companies that fail to protect user data now can feel the wrath of the FTC, and in fact, they recently uh, ruled on a case where that they had the legal right uh, or individuals have the legal right to sue companies if they fail to protect their, the, their customer data, if you will. The SEC is now involved, is pursuing a company that allegedly failed to properly protect its client's data in what must be the first of its kind enforcement action. So they actually rule and enforcing uh, uh, a ruling for this particular case. Next. So also you should be aware of there is a Cybersecurity Act passed by our government. The Cybersecurity Act of 2015 creates a framework for sharing of cybersecurity information between private entities and the federal government. Right now, one of the big business issues that we all face today is not, none of us like to um, promote that we had a, a, a cyber is, uh, incident or an issue or one of our clients or customers had an issue. Um, because we, again, we don't want the negative publicity, we don't want the fallout, we're trying to minimize the damage, if you will. But this particular act now is uh, uh, saying that it's, we've got to share that and uh, they're looking at the government to enforce that amongst all the businesses. Next. So we also have to think of, or you have to, you have to look at cyber, uh, state cyber laws. Many laws now are being passed or discussed within their various uh, governments uh, on cyber laws. And again, there's no one size fits all. There's many laws that are completely different. Uh, most appear to have no distinction between loss caused by an entity or losses caused by an entity's vendor. And that's a key statement here, again, for our system integrators on the phone, is that you are and could be susceptible to loss litigation and things like that as well. Um, some of the penalties recently, which I find extremely fascinating, is uh, up to a half a million dollars in civil pen penalties per breach for failure to notify uh, a timely, in a timely manner of a cyber incident is a new law in the books in Florida. Uh, $5,000 per violation, if not received within 10 days, is a new legislation that has uh, been recently passed in Louisiana for a cyber uh, incident, again, that, that precautionary, extra precautionary measures were not taken and you fail to um, uh, communicate that to the various government entities. Next. Um, several of us deal with financial institutions. So a new thing that's going on from the business perspective with respect to financial institutions, uh, that there's the Office of the Controller of the Currency now expects every bank to practice effective risk management regardless, and this is key, whether the bank performs the activity internally or through a third party supplier or vendor. A bank that uses a third party does not diminish the responsibility of its board of directors and senior management. So that's again something new that has just come across from the business perspective basically within the last uh, several months. Next. Um, one that, again, 
is starting to uh, come into play is Moody's ratings for companies. Uh, whether, again, it's you as a, a system integrator or a contractor or a partner of LinkSpring or one of our customers, one of your customers, the threat of cyber issues now are starting to affect how Moody will give you a financial rating. Um, they'll look at the credit implications associated with the type of cyber measures and defense that you have the um, prevention and how your response plan looks. So uh, again, you might have the best financials on the books, but they're going to also start to look at uh, how you are addressing cyber protection within your uh, businesses, including the BMS and the energy management system and our facility system. Next. Insurance. Uh, we all need insurance. Uh, insurance companies are also beginning to evaluate and rate a company cyber health. And sure, and insure it, or choose not to insure it, or if they insure it, depending on your cyber health, they, it may cost you more. So look at it. It's very similar to how we're judged on our health insurance, uh, depending on the risk and your, um, what measures you're taking to take, stay healthy or not, insurance companies are starting to look at this the same way. Next. Um, this one, uh, and I, I want to be completely upfront, I just found this out two days ago. A group in Australia now has developed the industry's first cyber preparedness score for businesses, if you will, like a FICO score. And they are out promoting this where they will come into the business, obviously do an assessment or whatnot, and then the outcome is at this particular FICO type score, which obviously if there's a good FICO score, it can be used with the insurance companies. It can be used with the proof points that the organization or the company is taking additional cyber measures uh, for their systems. Next. Um, for the, our, our friends who are integrators, uh, cyber liability. Cyber liability, as I'm sure we all would expect, has multiple in-depth meanings uh, for an integrator and for our customers or your customers, if you will. Uh, and it all sums down to risk. How much risk are you as an integrator willing to take? How much risk are, do you want your customer to take? And how much risk is that particular customer willing to take? And given the way the scenarios are going with the legislations and the legal issues, um, I would think that we don't want much risk at all, that you want to minimize that risk. Next. Um, again, this whole idea about cyber liability from an integrator's perspective is still pretty new, but depending on who you talk to, one thing is clear, it should be at the top of your, uh, your list at your radar and uh, looked at, you know, for each and every one of your customers and how you conduct business. Next. So some of the questions that you should be asking yourself and or you can ask uh, your customers, you know, are we secure? How do we know we've not been compromised today? How would we know? What would we do about it if we were? Are we prepared to face the threat? Do we have a cybersecurity statement and our policies and procedures? And how about, the, if I'm an end user, how about the companies in our supply chain? Are they secure? So I think if you go through the exercise yourself and try to answer these questions or come up with answers to this, you'll be uh, on your way to a good start. Next. So when it comes down to responsibility, you know, every, every uh, there's cause and effect in everybody, there's responsibility on everybody's part. So. We kind of look at it in three three parts. Number one, it's the technology providers. It's the people who provide the hardware, the software, 
the systems, the equipment and stuff that we use every day that we put together a uh, fantastic system. It's the integrators. It's those folks who are actually doing that and putting together uh, those systems who are deploying them, who is installing them, who is servicing the ultimate end user customer. And it's the building owners and the operators. They need to ask the integrators and the technology providers, what are you doing to help ensure the cyber protection of these systems and the services that you are providing? Next. And in summary, uh, you know, there's operational, financial, and reputational impact. Security must be considered a fundamental requirement today. When it comes to cybersecurity, the business case is equally as important as the technology case. And that's the key point here as one of the, the walkaways that it is a business issue. And that's the, the whole gist of this particular uh, webinar today. And finally, before I turn it over to Sean, uh, next, Daryl, please, I want to leave this with you. This is a list of, I apologize, it's hard to read, but this is a list of resources that we uh, have put together, uh, and you'll have it in the, uh, uh, on the download when you uh, download the presentation if you want, or email me and I can send you just this slide, of uh, some valuable resources that we have found that can help you look at cybersecurity and uh, answer a lot of questions and whatnot. So again, I hope I've given you a nice perspective on cybersecurity, again, from the business side. So now uh, we're going to get a whole different look at it from Sean's perspective. Sean? Hey, Mark. Thanks so much. So uh, we're switching over presentations here. If you guys can change the presenter over to me, we'll do a quick technology check. And uh, I think we're going. Mark, just let me know if you can see my screen. We can. Excellent. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Thanks, Mark, for having me and for setting the stage up here. So as Mark said, you know, we're, I'll go into a, you know, a very similar kind of uh, topic here in presentation um, and give you a little bit different perspective. So maybe just to, to give you a little framework of that perspective, a little bit about us in the intelligent building. So we're, we're a professional services company that's, that focuses specifically on the realm of smart buildings. So the services we provide are, they're, they're, not, they're not in um, uh, conflict to what a lot of ecosystem partners with inside of LinkSpring do. We don't do a lot of system integration work. We do a lot of um, strategy development, design, all the, the um, professional services that go around working and developing a, a smart building portfolio or project or um, strategy at large, right? So we're based in Charlotte, North Carolina. We worked in over 80 cities in the U.S. and Canada. We're, we're truly vendor agnostic. Um, and, and really what we do is we work with some of the largest real estate portfolio holders in the world to implement and develop smart building strategies. So that, that can be a whole host of different technologies, how we're going to deploy them, um, and then what's the ecosystem, the people side, the change management side, the planning side that goes around implementing those technologies. So with all that said, you know, cybersecurity is certainly an area that's become a, a, a huge focus for a lot of our customers. And I should say for, for context purposes, a lot of what I'm going to go through here is, is a bit an offering and a messaging that we've developed for our customers that we've actually uh, we've partnered with LinkSpring and their ecosystem to provide services around this. So as I'm kind of going through the presentation, please keep in mind that, that you know, the solution here is really something that's going to be available to, to the ecosystem within LinkSpring to address these as you come up with uh, different conversations inside of your customer base. So, um, so at large, we're talking about building monitoring control systems and the cybersecurity risks associated with them. So, so nothing new to the, to, the, to the individuals on this call that all these building systems today are, are based on the fundamentals of, of IT connectivity, IT data, um, IT um, network architectures and so forth, right? So they all have servers, they all have workstations, they all have switches and networks, and with that come is an inherent risk around cybersecurity. These are new gaps and new risks that our industry hasn't necessarily um, adapted to, and definitely new risks and new gaps that the owners have not adapted to because it's not necessarily on the radar and it's just not becoming on their radar, and they haven't had the infrastructure in place in terms of how to address it. 
when I say infrastructure, I mean resources, and I also mean but capital budgets, right? So one of the things we've seen a lot is that it's an inherent risk that they're not aware of. But in terms of looking to who to help provide them, where the budget dollars are going to come to fund the efforts around solving these issues, that's been a big kind of question mark in a lot of our a lot of our customers' minds in terms of how are they going to do it and who are they going to help um, do this. Um, whether again, looking at the Venn diagram that Mark showed. There's a lot of different people in the process, right? You have the technology providers, the integrators, the building owners themselves, and the ecosystem of vendors. So everyone has a, has a role in this conversation. So to build a little bit on, on kind of what Mark had kind of set the stage on, you know, the real risks around cybersecurity inside of our world, inside of building modern control systems, are, are kind of narrowed down to the, these five major ones, right? So certainly there's the, the brand damage, right, the, the target kind of situation where it's very, very difficult to, to recover from something like that. Um, all of our customers, you know, one of their number one objectives is that I want to stay out of the front page of the Wall Street Journal. That's, you know, number one objective, do not put me there. So, so that's a real concern, and not only is it a concern for the customers, but it's also a concern for the, uh, for the, for the vendors that are providing that customer, right? So, so if a customer has an, an issue, and it, then they then point the finger back to their ecosystem of partners, then inevitably you know, the brand damage then falls and shifts over to whoever that system integrator was, that technology provider. So <clears throat> being mindful of that's very important. White safety incidents, as we look at um, building monitor control systems, whether it's doing elevator control, fire alarm monitoring, um, could be doing um, different types of like safety functions, smoke evacuation, and so forth. These are all, all uh, uh, functions that need to be addressed from a cybersecurity standpoint. Overall productivity loss, if, if there's some downtime with, with a facility, mission critical facilities, things of that nature. Equipment damage, right, so, so a, a malicious actor could come in and, and cause damage to the major pieces of equipment, chillers, spoilers, things like that, if, if they know what they're doing and they have their appropriate back doors. And then, and then really the worst of all is, is that corporate network infiltration. Um, you know, crossing the bridge, moving over from, from the building systems over to the corporate enterprise. Um, we've seen some instances of this with, with corporate espionage and things like that. So this is a real threat and, and something that, that people are, are now being very mindful of. So, so here's a quick little uh, diagram. This is kind of a, just a, a fun diagram that shows this is a, you guys are familiar with Norse. This is really a, this is a software and solution that helps you detect um, cybersecurity attacks and vulnerabilities. So this is uh, this is just a screen capture of real time cyber attacks that are taking place at the time we took the screen capture. And you can see that obviously North America and the U.S. is, is basically the uh, receiving the, uh, the 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 blunt of the damage here coming you know, originating from from Asia and China and so forth. Um, this shows real life kind of um, <clears throat> um, consistency and and real action around cybersecurity attacks. And uh, this isn't just uh, uh, be in, in full disclosure. This is not specific to building automation systems. This is specific to building systems at large. But you can use a tool like this to dive in and find out which systems are being attacked, right? So you know, particularly in this tip, there there's some attacks that are occurring on some, some SQL servers, some Telnet applications, HTTP. These are all there's a whole host of these. And these are all things that reside inside of building monitoring control systems, right? So. While this image here shows cybersecurity attacks at large, they are attacking known vulnerabilities that exist inside of the software and technologies that we use to monitor and control our buildings. So there's vulnerabilities on the enterprise side, um, there's vulnerabilities on the building system side as well. So there's, there's, and this is something, again, that most people don't have um, processes in place for making sure that the you know the the Microsoft and the SQL and the Telnet and, and those types of applications that they're updated on a regular basis inside of a building monitoring control system environment, right? So uh, that gives you a little bit of kind of scale here in terms of what's going on. There's been uh, Mark gave a, a bunch of great examples on uh, on different events that took place. Here's some, <clears throat> and I, I know we're running a little bit late, so on time here, so I'm going to go a little bit quicker. And uh, here's some, a couple examples of you know some real. There, there's the ICS certification body, the federal body that's going out and is looking for these vulnerabilities, devices out here that have these known vulnerabilities, and they're being published to websites like this. That you can go and you can check the vulnerabilities of different hardware and, and systems and so forth. 
So of course we have typical building system control networks, um, and all these, and I'm sorry, these are typical corporate networks, and they come with secure data environments, secure firewalls, IT policies, and so forth. In the world we're living in is really lacking all those establishments, right? Because because this world took years and years and decades to build up. This year, just it, this world just kind of happened, right? One day we woke up and we had IP addresses on our building systems. So um, so we kind of we, we 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 gravitated and we migrated faster than we could develop the firewalls and the policies and the procedures to protect this type of environment. Let alone we have a much bigger bigger ecosystem of vendors. Where in any large building you have lighting control vendors, system integrators, HVAC control vendors, security vendors, on goes the list, right? So there's a whole host of different people that may or may not be accessing these systems remotely, and controls around how these vendors are accessing these systems um, generally aren't in place or not, not regulated, let alone if there's a bad actor that may come in with some, you know, looking for a back door into the system. Um, so some obvious risks around there, and then you have the corporate network, which I described a little bit, and you have the building systems network, which is really combining in because a lot of the corporate entities are looking for the, the economies of scale and the asset utilization rates of, the higher asset utilization rates of leveraging their converged IP backbone for these building systems. They also have facility individuals who may share a laptop, right, so maybe it's the enterprise corporate issued laptop they use to get on their corporate network, but they also have to go over and, and get access to the building automation system, right? So that's a that's a device, that's a physical device that kind of crosses over between one world to the next world of, of kind of secure control policies, unsecure policies, and so forth. So kind of moving along here a little bit, really the goal of this whole solution is to kind of bring these two worlds together and make the building systems network as secure as the corporate network with these firewalls, procedures, policies, and so forth in place. Um, the way that we typically recommend this is done with our customers is looking at five specific control measures, and this is where, where in terms of an offering to to your customer base or or a differentiator in terms of responding to a bid that shows to show your customers that you are responsible and mindful, and that this is a this is a known area. These are the five control areas that we look at when we do our assessments, and we we recommend other people look at when they do their assessments. So the first is just the internal roles and responsibilities. So this is inside of the customer. Who owns this, right? Is this a facilities task? Is this an IT task? Is it a combination of both? Typically when the conversation comes up, it kind of falls in, in, in a dark man's gap in between. Nobody wants to take ownership for it. So first and foremost, we have to say someone needs to own this process internally inside of the customer and they need to guide this, right? So and that's where budgets start getting shifted and allocated and things like that. But that's kind of step one is to make sure that there's clear ownership in the process. Two is an evaluation of the field devices, right? So that's you know, going back to Mark's kind of Venn diagram. That's one of those elements to say the field devices that are in the facility today that maybe were installed 10 years ago, maybe they were installed three days ago. But there's firmware on those devices, there's architecture of those devices, things like that. And making sure, going back to that web page I showed a few minutes ago, there's devices out there that have known vulnerabilities with them. So we want to make sure that, that those are addressed and that the firmware on those is in place and, and most current. Same thing with software and, and computers and servers, right? So let's just make sure that those are running the most updated software patches, um, and that, they're, that they're architected correctly. And, and speaking of architecture, how are these devices connected to the outside world, right? So all the vendors and system integrators of the world want to have remote access to the site because there's some cost benefits of doing that from a maintenance and, and an or, uh, initial deployment standpoint. But there is a whole host of different ways to do that through um, different technologies and, and managed service providers and things like that. So looking at how that's architected and making sure it's done in, in a responsible manner. And fifth and finally, how are the vendors accessing the systems, right? So if a particular vendor is accessing the system and, 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 and Bill has access credentials, he was let go on Friday, what happens to Bill's access credentials, right? How is that controlled? Um, and, and, I, and I know everyone on this call has seen the, um, the, 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 the simple kind of how do you access the building automation system? Well, well, it's admin, admin, or it's blank, or it's the address in the building, or all the facility technicians are using the exact same um, username and password. Very simple things like that that pose very serious cybersecurity risks and just having a process in place for those shows to your customers that one that you guys are, are, are being responsible for this, are, are taking note of it, and, and it's, it's a serious issue. So um, again, that's kind of a differentiating in, in the offering. Um, 
So the way we do it, we, there's a couple different ways that we do it with, with different versions of uh, um, due time here. I'll kind of go through these, but we have an essential package, we have an enhanced package, and a, a custom package so we can get into different levels of how do you address these needs inside of an organization. But I think, uh, and, and kind of playing into what Mark had mentioned around that, um, that FICA score that the entity is developing out in, in Australia, looking at developing in a very similar fashion an evaluation criteria for individual facility systems um, to say, hey, what are your risks? What are on those five control measures that I talked about? What's your individual rating and risk associated with them so that you can look at what your overall risk for your portfolio or your individual building is? Um, is an important thing to know for, for customers in terms of what their real risks are. So uh, with, with that, Mark, I know we're a little bit over on time. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and throw it back to you. Okay. Thanks. Uh, that's great. We just got two. We've got time for two questions, and uh, I think Sean. Uh, the first one is for you. Um, is that uh, the person has asked that uh, they've heard of CyberSafe? Um, is there a is there particular segments within the commercial building market where CyberSafe uh, is more beneficial, or that type of audit that you guys offer? Because uh, this particular person says they do commercial buildings, they do retail, they do education, uh, K through 12 in universities, and they also do government. Um, you want to address that? Yeah, no, it's, good. it's a good question, right? So, so ironically, I mean, this, this issue and topic is important to everybody, right? So, um, yeah. you know, it affects everybody the same, whether you're a, uh, a grade school or you're a financial institution. Um, there, there's risk, the, the risks don't change, right? So it's important to everybody, but we have seen certain verticals um, either adopt to it or embrace it a little bit quicker due to some of those other regulating bodies that like like, uh, like Mark, you had mentioned earlier around um, the OCC compliance and so forth like that. So where we've seen the highest degree of traction or in terms of customers really embracing the, the risk around this has been within the financial institutions because they, um, because they have some regulatory requirements with the OCC, with government for, uh, for obvious reasons for, for counterterrorism and for, um, for government liability and things like that. And, that, and then the third is, is really within, uh, within retail, um, small box retail, big box retail, because they have the biggest brands to protect. And, and that brand damage is, is such a major thing with the, you know, the cost of a breach exceeding over $15 million per breach. Um, you know, they have a lot, to, a lot to lose there. So those are kind of the three areas that we've seen the, the biggest um, adoption right, in, in services Got like this. Thanks. And then one last question. Uh, I'll go ahead and take this answer. Uh, from a late frame perspective, uh, are we starting to see more uh, cybersecurity uh, requests and specs in uh, for specs. And to that answer, yes, we are. Uh, if I look at our, uh, our uh, client base, our customer base, uh, we've had several of uh, LinkSpring business partners who uh, are facing that in specs that they get for a bid or an opportunity. And to that, just uh, as an FYI, we recently added a cybersecurity spec to uh, the Niagara slash Genesis uh, specification uh, engineering spec that we have. And again, if anybody would like a copy of that, uh, just you can reach out to me directly, mark.ptalk at linkspring.com or marketing at linkspring.com. So with that, uh, we're, we're basically out of time. We're a little bit over, and I apologize for that. So I want to thank everybody for joining us for this month's 30 Minutes with Link Spring. Our next one will be March the 16th. Again, it's always the third Wednesday of the month. And the subject will be announced uh, shortly. So again, thank you all very much, and hope you'll see us, uh, you'll join us on the next one.